we're getting kicked out. <laughs> I'm just gonna hop right into the video. Today I just wanna talk about a real life situation that's happening because in a few of my previous videos, which I can link above, I've talked about journaling and meditation and yoga and working out and all these things that I do in my day-to-day -day life to help manage my anxiety. I've also made a video about having social anxiety and just anxiety overall and learning ways to cope with that in my life. And we found out a week ago that we are being evicted from our home and just so happens that we will have to move out during the holidays because January of next year we will have to have gotten out of here and into a new place. And the month of October has been a harder month for me personally, just dealing with life. It's just been more challenging than other months and I can touch on other stuff that's going on in, in future videos, but this was just adding to the pile. And I just wanna talk about how we're going to manage the situation and the things I'm doing to kind of help manage the situation. If you're someone that lives in a city or is renting, you most likely have moved a few times in your life. I have moved, I think I counted over 20 times since I was 18 years old. And Jeremy, I think he has me beat. He's moved like 25 times or something like that. So we both have very similar experiences with having to move often and also neither of us likes moving. <laughs> I don't know many people that like to move, especially when you settle into a place. Um, I was really excited when I moved in with Jeremy. We moved in together over the pandemic in the last year and a half. And we were really hoping that where we are right now is where we would stay for a few years. And we actually put together a like a three-year plan like a financial plan and just personal goals that we had and things we wanted to make happen in the next few years with the caveat being that we would be where we are and rent would be what it is and all that stuff so there might be some of you that are wondering oh why don't you just buy a place <laughs> um, some of you might not be wondering that if you're people that live in BC or in Vancouver because you wouldn't understand but I will say this I have a full-time corporate job. Jeremy has a full-time job. We both are certified now yoga instructors. Jeremy's working part-time doing that. I'm still kind of getting into the field and getting my hours behind me and some practice teaching. I also run monthly online fit camps. I have my personal training certification. So we definitely hustle, 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 as I feel like you do as people in your 30s in this day and age. You know, I went to university, I got a degree, I've done all the things that I thought would make, would put me in a position that by this stage of my life, I'd be able to own a home. And it just hasn't been the case. And same for Jeremy. So we're renting for now. And we did have a plan um, to buy sooner than later, but you know, things change. Some life lessons that I've learned from this most current experience and um, all my other previous experiences with moving. Number one is that uh, we really, as much as we want to plan and try and control our environments, anxious people, that's what we do. We try and plan, 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 schedule and organize everything. And some people might even accuse us of being overthinkers or over planners or like we're nosy or we need to know all the details of everything that's going on but it's just because we're trying to create some sort of feeling of control over our environment. So this is something I've learned about myself and my anxiety, and it's really helped me in how I behave and respond to stuff now. Um, in the past, when I've had to move, one of my previous relationships, my ex loved moving all the time. We moved almost every year of our five-year relationship and I hated it. I didn't like moving because I felt very uprooted. I don't like having to to change my routine all the time. Like I like to get to know my neighborhood. I like to get to know the, the grocery store and the gym and the parks and the things that I like to frequent and have like those little places. And it's just been forever since I've felt like I've been able to do that. And And here we go again. So back to the first thing is that change is inevitable. As they say, it changes the constant in life. And the more you resist change, the more you fear change, the harder that change is gonna be. 
because it's going to happen regardless. Change is just going to happen. You can't stop it. So when we got the news at first, we were very calm, actually. Um, and we just started formulating kind of what our plan would be. Definitely over the course of the receiving that information, we've had, you know, some ups and downs with the stress of it all, but you can't be perfect. And we are definitely managing it the best that we can. So number one is just, you can plan as much as you want, but life is going to constantly throw curveballs, And the best way to manage that is to be able to duck and weave and accommodate those curveballs rather than trying to like block them because that's just going to hurt and it's, you got to kind of go with the flow. So that's number one. Number two is actually an awesome conversation that Jeremy and I had while we were talking about this situation and you know having to start to look for new places and there are a lot of factors that could make this change upsetting for us in terms of you know most likely the price of where we pay next is going to be more expensive it's really going to affect our three-year plan which is probably going to be adjusted to like a five six-year plan but we also agree that every time this happens in in our lives and in, in your life whenever a change happens it seems like it could be the end of the world for you or it's the worst news possible or it's the last thing you wanted to happen. Generally, when you flash forward a year from then, maybe six months, maybe five years, you look back and you think, thank goodness that that happened. That changed the trajectory of my life in such an amazing way and it really shifted where I was headed or my goals or my experiences and I'm so glad it happened. So you know, we both have been separated, we've been divorced, I've had lots of failed relationships and jobs and, you know, you you can't achieve everything that you want, you don't always get everything that you hope to get and when, you know, something fails or there's some sort of change, in the moment when you're going through it, it can seem horrible but then if you have some distance between it, you can appreciate maybe the growth that came from that. So we're both on the same page that although this isn't what we thought we wanted for right now it's going to unveil something potentially even better than we can even imagine so we have that attitude now we every time we kind of waver from that and get upset or you know feel this loss or frustration we kind of go back to this could be something great and and so before i get to the last point i'll just kind of explain more of like how we're getting evicted because I'm sure many of you will be like you'll start looking up the tenancy agreements and things online because if you live in any city you probably have been through this before even if you live in a smaller town living with landlords is not easy being a tenant is not always easy <laughs> because things can happen like this so basically what's happening is our landlord is moving in a family member into our suite and that is a loophole in tenancy agreements where if that's the plan, they can just give you two months notice, one month of your rent being free, and you just have to leave. So that's what's happening. So we've come to accept it and it's totally fine and it's legal on both sides and all that. So we're not trying to actively pursue any kind of dispute in that regard. For our mental health, for our happiness, we just wanna like focus our energy on like finding a place that's right for us because clearly this place is no longer right for us. So the third part of this that's kind of helping myself manage my anxiety and about the situation and keep my stress levels down is just like still focusing on my day to day and being very present. My anxious self wants to freak out because we can't even really start looking for a place right now because nothing is being posted or advertised yet for January. We're still a couple months out. I feel like I can't do anything. And if I could be looking at places and, and, and securing that our new space, so then I at least know where we're going, that would give me that sense of control that my anxiety needs to feel okay about the situation. But that's just not the case. So what I'm doing is putting into practice the concept that I just have to trust the process. And it kind of like all of these tips kind of, I think the theme is the same. It's just about letting go of the control and trusting, and trusting the process. I just mean that 
believing and having faith that things are going to work out. Because the alternative is to believe the worst case scenario that we're not going to find a place, that the place we find is going to be super expensive, we're not going to be able to afford anywhere, you know, no one's, nowhere is going to accept dogs, we're going to be homeless, like, we're going to need to find a store, like, these are all the things that I, my mind can go to if I want to just try and predict and plan the, the worst outcome possible. Or I can just choose to imagine the absolute best case scenario which is that we're gonna find the perfect place in a neighborhood that we both love, that has all the things that we both wanted that maybe we don't have right now, that Bruce, our little friend, she's gonna be happier there, that we're still gonna be close to friends, and perhaps this new location is gonna open up our experiences to even better experiences than what we could have had here. So that's where I'm keeping my thought process for now. I'm not trying to imagine the worst case scenario because that's something I've done a lot of my life. I had so much resistance every time I've ever moved. Even when I gave up my place to move in with Jeremy, I struggled to find that place and I loved it so much and I'd only been there for about five months before I met Jeremy and I held on to my place for the remainder of a year because I still didn't want to let it go because I was afraid that if I let it go, I wouldn't find anything else if me and Jeremy didn't work out. I was afraid that me and Jeremy wouldn't work out. <laughs> I was afraid that I was making a mistake. And instead of allowing myself to have that fear, I just let it go and I trusted the process that me and Jeremy would be great, that this decision was the right decision. And it turned out to be an amazing decision. And we've had the best time living together. And... Moving is not easy. There's gonna be stressful moments. No matter how many times I've moved, I've made a promise to myself every time that I'm not gonna have a meltdown on moving day. And I seem to always still sometimes have some kind of a meltdown on moving day. It's just a stressful thing in people's lives. It's, it's right up there with, you know, losing someone in your life, like a death in the family, um, losing a pet, have, getting divorced, losing a relationship. Moving is up there in terms of being a very stressful event in your life. And, you know, it is what it is. I am thankful, though, that I am doing this with Jeremy. I'm thankful that, you know, we're both on the same page about how we want this experience to go. We definitely want to stay in the present. Oh, Bruce is having a nightmare. Wake up. No nightmares. Uh, we're definitely wanting to not turn on each other, which we, we really are actively having to remind ourselves not to do because that's what happens when you get stressed. You turn on the people that are around you that love you and they see the worst in you and things like that. Oh my God. Okay. Bruce is having a nightmare. Hold on. Woo! Hey. Oh, having a bad dream. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. So yeah, we're just wanting to in the next two months while well, we have to look for a place pack up get everything organized move move into a new place all those steps that we're going to have to take we want to enjoy our life still and be kind to each other and enjoy the day-to-day -day things that happen in life and not let this be something that like affects our mood and our quality of life over the next two months so we're going to be a team we're gonna make it work. We're gonna find a new place that accepts dogs. And you're gonna be very happy there. Yes, you are. Maybe we'll have a yard. Maybe it will have air conditioning. Who knows? We don't know, but we're gonna find out. So I just wanted to share that today if any of you are going through anything stressful, especially over the holidays, to try to keep these things in mind that really there's not a lot we have control over, but we do have control over our reactions and how we respond to the events that get thrown at us. Literally, that's all we really do have control over. And uh, I've learned that the hard way and the long way, but I'm glad that I'm here now and I can kind of implement this with Jeremy and Bruce as we go through this big life experience together, so. Wish us luck and we'll check in with you <laughs> later and let you know when we find our new place and maybe we can give you a tour. Yeah. Okay. 
thanks for listening and comment below if there's something similar going on in your life i'd love to hear about it we can share and chat and hit the like button if this was helpful to you and i'll see you guys in the next one